I am getting ready to straighten the frame out a little bit on this mobile home where during the delivery process the movers went into a ditch and buckled the frame and bent it and I don't know if you can see it on the video or not but right in this area here uh, we we got a higher spot it goes up um, right there above that where the pink insulation is I see a high spot there it was a little bit more over here but I got it down a little bit on that spot and it's showing up more right here at the moment and this is in the kitchen living room area uh, if you remember on an earlier video those of you that follow my channel we put this uh, door in the kitchen here this this glass door we took a window out put a uh, glass door in because I want to put a little barbecue um, thing deck outside this door here anyway we're getting ready to do the we're, I'm finished with the wiring I'm getting ready to do the um, insulation over this lowered ceiling so that we can get started on the drywall as soon as my carpenters got time to start on the drywall on the ceiling and the buckled frame is not going to affect the drywall on the ceiling but um, I like being able to see through here everything that I need to watch and, and, and uh, pay attention to while I'm trying to straighten the frame out but I cannot straighten the frame out after we drywall the the walls because it'll it'll damage the uh, it'll mess up the drywall on the walls so anyway Let's go outside. Let's take a look. But you see where we're concentrating. This big picture window here and the tall glass door right in between those two. It looks like it's closer to the picture window is where we're seeing the worst of the buckling up here. Don't know if it's showing up on the video, but I see it where I'm standing. Now that is the, the door right there in the, in the center and the picture window is right here and when I look down the sides I don't really see it on the siding but maybe since we had this siding off doing this work and put it back on maybe we put it back on a little straighter and it's hiding the buckling I think I would be able to see it on the roof if I went up with a ladder but I'll show you where I do see it is when I crawl underneath here and, and remember, it's right next to the window there. This is where we're seeing some buckling crawling under here. And we'll see more of it if I get the dirt that's lodged in those axles there. If I get that off, we'll be able to follow this frame rail down. I'm going to get that dirt off and get another picture of that here in a few minutes. But right here, right there where I'm pointing, is a swollen area where the frame is buckled. And if you look underneath, you'll see it there. And I've got a plan. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Here's the worst of this bulge on this side here and I don't know how well we're seeing I think we're seeing it on the camera here we got a, a I'm having to squint I don't have my glasses on anyway I'm gonna to try to pull this over that way some and pull it down at the same time and what I did was I jacked it up and took the the um, uh, shims out that were on top of those blocks there and that, that board and their shims well we got a airspace there I thought by taking those shims out see they tried to hide that uh, buckled damage by shimming it up there well on a set of blocks the next set of blocks down it's on the other side of the axles well it's in actually in the middle of sets of axles okay I shimmed that up a little bit higher took the shims out of here and I put them down there and then these shims on this side over here um, I pushed those shims in a little bit tighter jack that up 
and I thought that the weight might just come down over here but it didn't so it still left a gap well what my plan is I'm gonna go ahead and take this board that's sitting on top of those blocks I'll take that one out and here's my plan I'm gonna I'm gonna drill into this concrete since I gotta pull this over that way or try to and pull it down at the same time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill holes in the concrete over here on this side of it not not dead center underneath but more to this side I'm gonna to try to pull uh, both sideways to my right and down at the same time and I'm gonna to try to pull it down enough to where when I take the tension off it goes back up to about where it's supposed to be and uh, hopefully I can do that from where I'm at right now I'm not sure um, not sure I don't want to buckle this thing somewhere else in the process so I'm gonna probably leave a lot of these blocks up there I, I don't know we'll, we'll just do it a little at a time but I bought some large anchor bolts well, not real big, they're just half inch for concrete anchors. I'm gonna drill a hole at an angle down like this and, and bolt through a chain and then um, burn a, a hole, bring a torch over here, burn a hole right over this and wrap my chain around this and probably put a bar of steel. Since this material is so thin, I'll probably put a bar of steel in here so I'm not putting too much tension just in one spot where the hole is, but the tension will be uh, more balanced out across a bigger length of this here. Little by little, that's my plan, is, is uh, probably get a chain binder, a, um, a uh, ratchet binder I meant to say, and see if I can crank it down with that. Um, not sure yet. I got a port of power with a 10 ton uh, pull cylinder which means the ends pull together on it. it has hooks on it and the ends pull together that might work for me I might be able to just use that because I don't even do ratchet binders since I'm local when I haul steel I just do the snap binders because they're faster and we're not going very far so they don't have to be all that all of them don't have to be all that tight uh, they, they get tight but they're not going to be all the same so anyway um, that's why I don't have ratchet binders of my own but I could either borrow one but that that hydraulic pull cylinder in my uh, port of power kit will probably work just as good it claims to have 10 tons it won't have that many because it's a harbor freight so if it's got at least six or seven tons that should be pretty good that might do the trick here's what I'm going to drill with uh, got some 3 8 chain here and at the end link might even be able to go through the middle of these I don't know I haven't tried looks like yeah it'll even thread through a middle link it'll surely thread through an end link and uh, hammer drill with a half inch bit these are half inch anchor bolts like I said I'm going to put them in at, at an angle so that I can pull from the left it might bend the bolt might even break it off I don't know um, I got four of them in case I need uh, more of them and I got several lengths of this is just a small piece of chain I brought over to see get an idea of, but I got more chain and then of course we'll use a battery powered impact to uh, run those bolts in got the dirt off I'm gonna clean that up and get that out of there but first let me come down here oh, I got these things here I'm going to see if I can look down that rail. I'm really not seeing what I'm looking for, but 
Anyway, looking down the rail there, trying to see how straight and level it is all the way down. And can't really tell because I'm right near the highest part where it's bent upwards. And so it's bent there, and so it's somewhat straight going down that way and somewhat straight um, going that way somewhat straight coming back this way somewhat straight after this now if I went about 20 feet behind me which I can't because the steps and stuff are there I probably could get on the other side of the steps but then we'd see this big bend right here where where it comes out and goes back in over there that's where it goes up and so um, we're going to clean that up if we can. Okay, I am ready to start on this. I found a piece of metal in my junk. Not ideal. It would be kind of ideal if it were a piece of angle iron, half inch thick, but this is just flat stock. I burned a hole through it that the half inch bolt should go through. And I'm going to bring the torch underneath there and find that wrinkled spot. I can't see it right now from where I'm at, but I'm going to go ahead and put a hole in that and then um, get started. I got all my tools down here. I got my extension cord. My drills powered up. Getting ready to burn a hole through that. And um, got the torches over here. The portable set anyway. It's propane torch. It doesn't burn quite as hot as acetylene. As I took this over to the shop and burned that with acetylene. It'll be, it was faster than waiting on the propane to heat that up. All right, let me get started here. That first one went pretty quick, so I'll go ahead and record doing a second one. I thought they'd go down farther than that. Well, that's as far in as I can go with them with that drill. I'll have to get a longer bit to go any farther or shorter bolts. And um, anyway, I think I'm ready to, to start sticking this porta power on there. And I might. Um, Got kind of a short distance. I'll just have I can't just hook in the middle of this. I'll have to try to hook over this someplace. And I'm I'm not quite over the middle of where it's buckled at here. So I'm probably gonna go and get a large crescent wrench and start pulling down on this while I'm uh, pulling this whole thing over and down. 
All right, got the porta power hooked up, and if you watch this, this cylinder pulls when I pump it. You see the ram here is going in; it's getting shorter. So I'm gonna don't have a lot to work with there. I'm gonna run out, but I'm gonna see if I got enough. I may have to put these bolts back in farther back here. I don't know. That's it's, that's the shortest I got to work with. The only thing else I can do is check up the whole trailer uh, higher. I don't want to do that too much. Okay, I got it on there. It's starting to pull. The bad thing is I just got the point of the hook in one link of the chain and not up here where the hook is supposed to be at its strongest. Not much I can do about that. I'm just not going to put a whole lot of tension on it because if the hook breaks then there's nothing I can do. If the hook starts to bend I'm okay if the hook bends a little bit but if it's brittle and it just breaks off then I have to buy another one. Um, let's see here. Kind of taking a look at the gap over there above the, uh, the block of wood that's on top of the bricks. Kind of looking at that gap right now we got looks like about five eighths to three quarters of an inch okay now i'm going to hold the camera and i'm going to try to pump this jack or this this ram while i'm doing this slowly a little at a time and see what happens i'm not going to be able to reach this wrinkled part here the way i'm set up right at the moment I can't do this with one hand. I'm gonna to have to set the camera down, sorry. Well, it just heard a loud pop. I thought maybe the hook broke, but what it did was it forced its way in to the uh, chain link. So I may have to burn the chain link off of there to get the hook back out of there. But uh, right at the moment, I don't think I need to get it out. I think because uh, we're still pulling. Well, my three quarter inch gap was down to about half an inch and then it went back to about three quarter again. So that's because uh, we just lost the space that we gained right here when the hook seated down into that chain link. This is not real good. The concrete's starting to to buckle and uh, and crack and I may need more support than what I have down here more anchoring trial and error haven't done this before don't have a whole lot to work with well I ran out of jack and we just got way too much bolt sticking out so either I got to go back to the store and get shorter bolts or a longer drill bit this is only six inches thick this concrete um, I think the shorter bolts would be the ticket and uh, we've pulled that down about down to about half an inch but it's going to spring back up as soon as I relieve the pressure my goal is really to pull it down until it's ready to touch that that block of wood and then I'm going to pull the block of wood out pull it down some more so that when it springs back up it'll hopefully spring back up to level or at least real close to it a lot closer than where, where it is where it was when I started so I'm going to go ahead and release the jack here and let's see what happens Well, it stayed down some. It didn't go back up as far, so we're making progress. Got those bolts out. Kind of bent. This one's worse. Took me a little while to get them out. And I took, I had, I already bought four bolts. And I uh, didn't go back to the store because I had four. I just cut two of these 
uh, other ones off. Took a couple inches off of them, so let's try these. Let's see if I can get away with even using the same holes again. No, I ran out of uh, I ran out of distance here. Let's see. Figure out something here. I'll bolt them back down again somehow, and and uh, we'll do this again. I am pumping again. You got these bolts in over here a second time in a different spot. Running out of concrete. And this time I didn't put the bolts in at an angle because I don't want to pull and bend them up at an angle and pulling all the concrete out. I went more straight down. But at this sideways angle. And we kind of bottomed out with them too. So that's good. I think we might be on to something this time. So let me pump this thing up and see what happens. I have got that gap closed right at the moment and it's really hard to pull this thing but um, I need to pull it past where it needs to be because it's going to spring back a little bit so I'm thinking I should go ahead and put a couple more pumps on it or maybe I'm just about out Looks like I got maybe seven eighths of an inch of cylinder left. Well, I don't have that much left because it doesn't pull all of it in. So we're we're making progress, and I'll probably go inside and check it with a level on the floor before I release the pressure, and then I'll see what the level does again afterwards. I brought this big crescent wrench out here. I'm going to use it to try to uh, straighten out some of these wrinkled spots like that right there. Um, can't get to the one over here. But I might be able to get to it after I take all this stuff off of it. That might take some of the stress off of it too. We pulled this bowed area. That did pull in quite a bit. Not perfect, but we got a lot of it in. There's a bowed area sticking out this way, again, right where that wrinkle is that I said I was going to straighten out. Well, I can't do it on camera very well by myself, so without rigging up a bunch of camera stuff. So I'm just going to go over here, straighten that out. We'll go inside in a minute and uh, check the level on the floor. I got that wrinkle straightened out. It was right there. It's still bowed out the middle of the webbing part is still uh, where's my hand at sorry it's still bowed out right in there but it's too much trouble it's not worth trying to fix that but one of the downfalls of doing a job like this is I kind of figured this might happen that was not there we just did that and look it separated quite a bit so, oh well, nothing we can do about it. I think it looks a little better, but I still see a high spot right there on that upper plate. Still looks like it's a little bit high right there above that insulation. And again, a slightly less high over here above that post right there but that might be in the construction because I think I see another one right there where the door hinges are above that I think I see another high spot right there looks pretty obvious to me and I don't think the trailers buckled on that end so I'm gonna go ahead and check this on the floor with a bubble level well, right here by the door we're still Still a little bit uh, high over here on the left, which is getting closer to where it looks high up there. And um, if I raise this thing up on the right hand side, then the bubble will center. And let's move it on down here to this side.
Uh, we're pretty close to centered there. So this side over here is kind of balanced out. We still got a low spot over here a little bit. Some of that might be because uh, of that uh, bent up outrigger too. Well, standing up here on a stool in the corner and looking down the line there, they look, I don't know, these, these new joists up here on top, or rafters, whatever you want to call them, I don't think anybody's going to be able to see. If they don't already know about it, they're not going to see that there's a little dip. But there's a little dip between the door, the walk-in door and the main window there. There's a little bit of a dip right in there. I think we can see it now. Right, right in there, starting to dip right about here. So um, I'm not going to try to fix that. Just do what I can. Try to fix the damage that they caused because that's going to be a weak spot. And if adding all this extra weight with all this extra drywall. Um, it might uh, put a strain on that buckled area and make it dip even more so that's why I wanted to straighten it out before we drywalled it. I had to loosen up a couple of these new lower drafters over here on this front wall and adjust them. That's the wall that was damaged when they buckled the frame when they fell in the ditch moving this trailer and I put a tight line let's see if we can zoom in on it yeah that's it right there in the corner that pink line there and uh, I pulled it tight and all the way down to past the door <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There's a uh, another s screw or nail up there someplace. There it is, a screw in the board there. Pulled it really tight and then um, tied it off. And so I measured. No, I didn't use a measure. I just used a an eyeball inch from that tight line to the bottom of those rafters. Since the wall varied, it goes up and down a little bit. And that's the only wall that does it because that's where they damaged the frame. And I straightened the frame out as much as I could and then uh, came in here and adjusted these these new lowered rafters to be approximately one inch above that that uh, tight line all the way down. And you can see that one is raised up a bit. So is that one. That one not quite so much. That one may not have been raised at all that one surely is not raised and uh, anyway went on and did that to uh, level the ceiling so that the ceiling is level when it goes on and the walls will be level when they go up to the ceiling even though the original upper plate is going to be wavy and crooked and up and down we're going to compensate for that and you won't see that that was ever done when it's finished. <laughs>